Hey party people, um, what you can see here is a prototype version of the 512 QVL quad variable LFO. I'm just going to make this video a little bit of a run through, it won't be exhaustive. This is still a prototype and the panel is the non-finished one. It's a close to final firmware, but not final. I'll do a proper version once, um, once that's officially released. So let me explain what we're looking at here. It's a 12 HP module by Jim Coker at 512. It's a quad LFO, that's what it says in the name. So it's good that the name actually tells you what it is, quad variable LFO. There are two sides to it, uh, side A and B, and you've got LFOs and outputs one and two over here, and LFOs and outputs three and four on the right hand side. So four LFOs, two on the left, two on the right. As we move through, you'll see though that both screens are used to configure side A or side B, depending on where you are contextually. That is two different screens, four buttons, six knobs. And these feel really nice. They're not um, clicky ones, they're kind of continuous movement ones. Um, all right, so down here, we've got two gate inputs, four CV inputs, and four outputs, and all of those are assignable, allocatable, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And we'll go through a bit of that today. What I've got running right now is just a square wave out of a Western Precision Audio uh, PA0, uh, PAO, sorry, phase animated oscillator, and it just, I've got uh, output one connected to the pitch input on the Western. So what you're hearing is full range sine wave, into the into the one vo uh, one volt per octave input and it just sounds like that not very useful right on the front screen here and i hope you can see it you've got wave one type which is sine rate one so that's uh output one or lfo one and that's then that's the speed and rate two from so from right on the dashboard here i can i can change wave the wave shape for wave one and the rate for uh, output one and output two, or, or LFO one and LFO two. And on this side, I've got uh, wave three plus rate three and rate four. You can actually configure what's going to present on the main screen. So you can make the main screen uh, present the three different things per side that you want it to present. So that's kind of cool. Um, mostly I'm going to navigate using these two middle buttons, which are not the same names that will be on the final version. But let's just push what's called edit A here. And I'm immediately presented with LFO one and some options. You can see that what Jim's done here is really nice. He's put a little mini version of the um, LFO shape over on the top right. And that's on as many screens as possible to see either the LFO or the output and they're different things. So your LFO might look like one thing, but your output will look like a different thing because you've configured your output a certain way. Let's just go back, whoops. The other great thing about this is when you're in sleep mode or whatever you want to call it, rest mode, you can see a full screen version of side one and side two. Now it looks like side one only has one LFO and that's because LFO one and two are the same at the moment. So they're overlapping each other. Whereas on side B, you can see LFO three and four are slightly different. They're all sine waves at the moment, but we're going to go through and um, change that. So first up, I'm just going to go to initialize patch. Okay. There you go. So LFO 1 and 2 are equal, LFO 3 and 4 are equal, and that's why you can only see two things at the moment. So here we are, LFO 1. We can change waves, all right? Just change it to a triangle, to a saw, ascending saw, to a descending saw. What's called a shark wave, shark fin wave, I believe. Reverse shark fin. I guess it's changed direction. Cool. Maybe it's swimming away from you. That's a good thing. Squ uh, square wave and a sample and hold. And you can have the source of that being uh, a CV import or another LFO, or it can be set to an internal uh, noise type situation. And we've got some blended uh, waves here. So what this one's doing is going from, as the graphics says, sine to a triangle. So that's cool as actually. So if you've got a shape, you get a sine wave all the way at shape zero, and you get a triangle wave all, at a, all the way at 100. If you go to 50, 
you get kind of a bent in between one. You might not be able to see quite what that looks like. So let's go to the sleep mode and you can see, yeah, that they're slightly different now. So there are these blended wave options here. So that's sine to, 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 to triangle. That's saw to, uh, saw to triangle. That's saw to square. That's like a stepped square to a reverse one, re reverse stepped, uh, up and down stepped. And that's a sine oh, through a saw to a square. Gee, that's interesting. And yeah, so on. You've got all these different types. And you've got some other ones that are a bit more abstract. And you'll have to look up Wikipedia here. That's a Lorenz attractor. If you've ever wanted to attract a Lorenz, now you can. Um, and this is, I think, a Perlman or something, PRL. I'm not quite sure. Um, and yeah, LM1 escapes my brain at the moment. Let's just go back to one. I do know what it is. Let's just go to a triangle. So what we can also do is set the rate and what that's going to sound like. <laughs> All right, not that interesting, but you get the picture. Let's have a bit of a play with the shape next. So you can see there on the on the diagram what's happening. We've got an even triangle wave. Let me adjust the shape positively, negatively, or at least below 50. So what that's doing is above 50, you spend more time in the positive LFO area and less time in the negative. You can see how it's gone to like a, a house shape, all right? And we can take it all away so that it's almost no time in the negative. And then you could do the reverse. So even just with simple LFO shapes, with this um, ability to mo modify that using the shape function, it's pretty cool. So what else have we got here? We've got phase. Phase is pretty obvious. It's where the zero point starts in relation to the, the wave and so on. Uh, yeah, I didn't explain that very well. But you've also got different modes. Now, mode wide is the time you've got available to you. So it's 0.17 through to 246 hertz. That's pretty fast to pretty slow. Um, but you've also got different type, different dividers. So that goes all the way down to 0.01 for slow up to 16 hertz, right? And you've also got a hertz, which goes all the way down to one hertz, one hertz, is it hertz or hertz? Anyway, one hertz, <laughs> one hertz, uh, 127. Um, but the fun ones you get to, in my opinion, are when you start going to things like 16th. Wow, right? If you can go all the way from one to 16th, and that's like Pac-Man to nine sixteenths up to 127 sixteenths. Excitingly, you can also go to beats, so 127 beats per LFO cycle, or 127 bars per LFO cycle. I'm here to tell you that 127 bars is a very long time, BPM notwithstanding. The next question that I can hear you asking, even though you're not, because I can't hear you because you're in the future and I'm in the past, is... Well, how's it clocking? Well, let's just skip ahead a little bit and then I'll come back. So let's just set it to eight sixteenth notes. If I push this button through, I go through output one, LFO two, output two, mod uh, modulation, modulation. It is other stuff which I'll get to. You've got a clock function here, right? Now, right now my BPM set to 100. I can change that to, well, up to, I think it's going to be 200 in the final version, potentially or 180, and the BPM there is is, is 100, um, which I've just set it to now, but I can set my sync to gate input, or I can set it to the vector. Now that functionality is not available in the, in the firmware I'm testing today, but what I'm told is that it'll take the vector's BPM and it'll set it as your QVL BPM for clock A or clock B, and you can have clock A or B for side A or side B of the QVL set to different things which is pretty cool. Um, but let's just set it back to where we were with an internal time. 
that where we were before. So I'm holding that to get back to the main screen, long press of trigger to get back to the main screen, and here we are back at LFO. That's as far as I got before. Let's keep going. So we're LFO one, output one. Now my outputs are the, 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 the jacks at the bottom of the module here. I can set those, I can route any LFO I want to any output. The default is output one to LFO one, output two to LFO two, output three to LFO three, output four to LFO. Sorry, I said all that the wrong way around. LFO one to output one, LFO two to output two, LFO three to output three, LFO four to output four. And you've also got this setting here, op, which enables you to go from none to inverted. So I'll go back to none to inverted, watching the screen to rectified, to rev rectified inversion, to zero to, zero to five volts, to five to zero volts, to minus five to zero volts, to zero to minus five volts, to, and so on. So let's go back to none. You've also got offset, uh, offset's fantastic, obviously. Let's just get the pitch going again. First, I'm going to adjust the level, and that's the range of the LFO. Right? And then I'll move the offset positively. So it flat lines when it gets to the top of the range. And then if I go negative... Level zero, I get a flat line. Now, if you notice that it's stepping when I'm going through offset, then you're right. But that's only because we're going through the offset position of where the new, let's call it zero, is going to be for your wave or the neutral point or the middle point. Yeah, middle point. But it does not step, obviously, when you're running the um, LFO. Okay, so that's the LFO screen one, LFO one screen and the output one screen. They're your basic configuration modes for LFOs one to four. Now, if I push edit again, it goes to LFO two and output two. And again, I could route whatever I want to there. So I'm moving straight forward to modulation. Now I can set my modulation source to be none, which disables it to CV one, CV two, three, four, LFO one, Two, three, four. Z and Y will explain in another video. Envelope one, there are actually envelopes available on the LFOs. It's not an ADSR or envelope generator module, but you can apply envelopes to the way that the LFOs are presented. That'll be in the next video. Okay, so your modulation sources can be the internal, the, the CV inputs, any of the LFOs, or, or two, one of two envelopes per site. Okay, and that's your source. Your destination, and that's the interesting one for everyone, is going to be, it can be to rate one, shape one, phase one, one referring to the LFO. So rate, shape, phase, offset, level, rate two, shape two, phase two, offset two, level two. So from any of those sources, you can route to any of those destinations, and you can also adjust the amount that your source is, allow, is modulating the destination through from zero to negative two to positive 100. Yeah, positive 100, yeah, cool. Um, same on uh, source destination amount here. You've got two different modulation settings in, a, in the A1 screen and another two, so four total in the A2 screen. Four modulation routing options per side. So side A, four modulations, side B, four modulations. Now, reset for LFO 1 and 2 is about the source for the reset signal for an LFO, and that can be none, so it's free-flowing, gate 1, trigger 1, depending on what signal type you're sending into gate 1, gate or trigger 1, gate 2, trigger 2, gate or trigger 2, and so on. Yeah, so that's it's pretty obvious what that's going to do. You're going to send a trigger in, and it's going to reset your um, LFO when it receives the trigger. And the same with your envelope trigger which is pretty cool. And the envelopes are over here. They're, they're, at the moment, there's attack and release and attack, sustain and release. And you've got uh, your different attack and release times there as well. Excuse me. Um, and here's where you set up the main screen to say what you want to present on it. So let's change that to, let's say we want the wave one and wave two. There we go. And let's say we want, I don't know, let's go with, let's go with nothing. 
you know, just say we don't want anything there, right? Um, so if I go back, I can see wave one and wave two now. Oh, and it's got wave one down the... Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to come back to that. Uh, what did I do there? Interesting. Let's change that to level one. Yeah, okay. Interesting, I'll have to have to take that up. As I said, this is the prototype firmware, so not a finished thing. But as you can see, I've quite easily and quickly um, set up what I want my main screen to present to me, which makes this quite a playable module, if you think about it. Uh, I don't want to go too far into the future vector um, configuration, things that will happen, but you will actually be able to tell the LFO, the QVL, which preset you want to play uh, with each uh, part from your vector. What am I talking about? Well, you can actually save a whole bunch of presets on this module, right? So I can, I've got my preset that I'm working on here and I can save that to, oops, let's save that to any of 48 locations. So 48 presets and it'll save the complete um, presets. The preset, preset will be the four LFOs in the one preset. I believe that's the case. Um, I'll probably be corrected on that later. So let's do a bit of revision. Sleep screen shows your LFOs uh, in a nice big view. It's not going to replace your Mordex data, but if you don't have something like that, this is going to get you a long way into understanding what you're configuring with your LFOs. And I believe it, may, it helps make this a really great sound tool. Let's just go to LFO 3, 4 and change it just so we can see it differently to the, the other uh, one that's presented there. Okay. So now you can see all four LFOs, a solid line, a dotted line, a solid line, a dotted line for one, two, three, and four. So going back through, I can modify LFO and output one and two over here, as well as everything associated with them. Likewise, on this side, I can modify three and four by pressing these buttons. And it goes through exactly the same modes that I explained, uh, that I've been explaining for the last 17 minutes. Oh, 17 minutes, goodness me. And you can see, of course, that you've got clock B settings as well. Let that sink in. You can have LFO 1 and 2 running to one clock configuration and LFO 3 and 4 running to another clock configuration. I think that's pretty powerful. Um, so those are the main features of the QVL. I'm sure I've missed some things. Um, I'm absolutely sure I've missed some things. But I do want to just highlight that whilst this module does a lot, it's really quick and easy to get in and configure your LFOs, and it's quick and easy to see the results. Now, if I had the gates running in and all that stuff, you'd be able to see a lot more of an interesting demonstration, but you're going to have to allow me to wait till the final release because there's no point in me explaining all that stuff and then explaining it again. So anyway, I hope this um, has helped some of you understand what the QVL does. Going back to basics, four LFOs, two sides, A and B. On side A, you've got LFO one, LFO two, output one, output two. And on side B, you've got LFO three, output three, LFO four, output four, plus all of the related configurations for it. Um, there's an SD card on the back. That's where you do your firmware upgrades, updates, and it also is where it stores your presets. So you can back those up. Uh, and there's also a little pin connector that'll connect to the synchronization uh, with the vector. I believe that upon release, there'll be clock sync uh, in the in the release firmware and there'll be some other stuff coming later on um, so yeah that's the uh, 512 QVL quad variable LFO thanks very much